Good morning. I'd like to bring the July 15, 2020 Planning Advisory Commission to order. We'll first please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you will, turn around because the flag is out back in the yard right now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to ask if you would please to silence or turn off your cell phones this morning. Now I will, uh, we're operating under much different circumstances as most meetings that are now being held. We have some commissioners that are actually watching by television, YouTube or Facebook will be forwarding questions to me via text, so I will be looking down at my phone at times. We will, we will have citizens calling in via phone with questions and our comments. Uh, so we're, we ask those watching here and by other means to be patient with us as we move these cases forward. We do have a quorum this morning and we're, we're, we will be able to uh, make some decisions and send some recommendations in. Phone number in which to call is 706-225-3937 and it's scrolling on your screen for those of you that are watching by television or Facebook. I remind those in the audience, those watching on TV, this is the first hearing of any rezoning text change, rezoning text change or special exception request brought before us here today. We will first hear a reading of the staff report for the case by planning staff and ask the applicant to provide a brief overview of the request. We will then give the opportunity for anyone in the audience to speak for or against that request or to inquire about the setting quest, request. The commissioners will have any needed discussion on the case once a motion is made and seconded by the commission, a vote will take place and a recommendation will be rendered. The case will go back to the planning department for their independent recommendation. If a favorable recommendation is given, then the case is then forwarded to city council with the two independent recommendations. If the planning department makes a re recommendation for denial, the applicant will then have 10 days from the receipt of a letter stating the denial to notify the clerk of council that they are requesting to be placed on city council's agenda. The city council of Columbus will hold a public meeting and it'll be called the first, first reading. Said council will then consider the case, review our PAC planning and the planning department recommendations and hear discussion on the matter. Council will make a final decision at a second public meeting and that's called the second reading. Okay. Gentlemen, have you had an opportunity to take a look at the minutes via Trello or through an email? Uh, do we have any discussion about the minutes that need to be changed or did you see any things that need to be corrected? All right. Nothing said, nothing text, so I assume we will just um, go with the minutes from the last meeting. All right. This brings us to our first case. It's a rezoning case, uh, R-E-Z-N. 05201775. This is a request to rezone 0 0.13 acres of land located at 2911th Avenue. Current zoning is SFR4, which is single family residential 4. Proposed zoning is RMF1, which is residential multifamily 1. Proposed use is a triplex. Matthew Haggerty is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 7. Mimi Woodson will hear. We'll hear from Mr. Johnson first from the Planning Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. REZN 05-20-1775. This case is consistent with the plan with the comprehensive plan planning area D. Current land use designation is single family. Uh, I'm sorry, it's inconsistent. Current land use designation is single family residential, as is the future. It is compatible with existing land uses. Uh, the property does not lie within a floodway and floodplain area. The developer will need an approved drainage plan prior to issuance of a site development permit. The property is served by all city services. The average annual daily trips will increase by six trips if it is rezoned for a triplex. Uh, the site shall meet the codes and regulations of the Columbus Consolidated Government for residential usage. Uh, there's no school impact, no buffer requirement. This is not within Fort Benning's notification range. This is not a DRI. Surrounding zoning is to the north SFR4, south RMF1, east RMF1, and west RMF1. Uh, 50 property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified of the rezoning request. 
we received one call in opposition, and then we also had a petition submitted that you've got there on Trello um, with about five pages worth of folks in opposition. Um, there's no ITE trip generation uh, for the triplex, but s an additional six trips is accurate. Um, and that's all we have on this other than in 2016, we started the rezoning process in the Waverly Terrace neighborhood to take uh, single family homes of the folks who participated um, from RMF1 to SFR4 to eliminate opportunities to convert houses into multi-family uh, Units. Um, this was one of them that was rezoned to SFR4. Uh, finally, in 2017, um, and so this is an attempt to take it back to RMF1. Okay. All right. Commissioners, y'all have any questions, Mr. Johnson? Yes, sir, Mr. Brandon. So, looking at the the planning map, though, I mean, it appears a lot of units or, or uh, pieces of property in that block and surrounding are still. RMF one. So, did they, were there not a lot of people that took advantage of that, or there's a lot of rental in there? So, um, most of the folks who took advantage of it were homeowners. Okay. And then there's a lot of folks who are, like I said, own rental property, live out of town. We never heard back from them. But there, so I mean, just looking at this block that this property's on, there. Are several pieces of property on here that could be, I mean, that oh, everybody yeah. could just turn into a triplex with no further action. No, none at all. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All right, I have none by text. So uh, the applicant is Matthew Haggerty. Uh, will you be presenting the case? If you will, please come up to the podium here. State your name and address for the record. And tell us what your plans are, sir. Hi, good morning. My name is Matthew Haggerty. Uh, my address is 511 2nd Avenue here in Columbus. Um, I'm one of the property owners for 2900 11th Avenue. Um, essentially, I'm, I buy houses and I do rentals. That's what I do. Currently, we own about eight properties just in that neighborhood. We own about another six in downtown Columbus and probably about another 35 throughout Columbus. Um, essentially, the only reason we want to go to a multifamily is when we bought this property, it was already cut up into three separate properties. There's three existing kitchens in the house right now. Um, as far as the historic, uh, the historic nature of the house, we're gonna be re-roofing the house, uh, finishing the outside right now, it's, it looks pretty bad. So what we want to do is essentially keep the historic nature of the house by redoing the roof, redoing the paint, redoing the exterior, doors, windows, the whole thing. But on the inside, we just want to keep it how it was divided in the past. I know technically it is a single family home right now, but the way it's laid out is, uh, that's why we want to put it into a triplex. If we're not able to do that, I don't think we can hold on to this house and we'd probably just you know, sell it to someone who would probably just continue to rent it as is. Um, I can give you examples of other houses that we have worked on in that neighborhood, all single family as well, that we have kept single family and have uh, essentially redone the entire house. That, you know, goes from utilities to exterior to interior. And when we get our renters in, uh, we have very strict requirements. We uh, make sure that all of our renters pass a background check and pass a credit check, and they have to make at least three times what the rent amount is gonna be for our rentals. So, um, you know, as you know, we have a lot of rentals in this town. We're here to stay, we're here to grow, but we wanna make Columbus a better community, provide better rentals, and the only reason we're wanting to change this back into a triplex is just because of numbers. It, everything else is just, um, just numbers at that point. So if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, I'm also happy to give you any uh, contact information of myself or our company in case you guys have any further questions or concerns. All right, commissioners, do you have any questions? Anyone? All right, thank you, Mr. Haggerty. Appreciate your time, thank you. Thank you. 
All right, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak for this case? Please come forward at this time. And if you would, please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Libby Smith. Uh, Mike Johnson and I are here to represent Waverly Terrace. Uh, I am president of the Waverly Terrace Historic Association. Ms. Smith, could you pull that micro? There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Mike Johnson and I represent Waverly Terrace Historic Association. I am president of our organization and Mike is secretary. My husband and I have lived in Waverly Terrace for 17 years. We've worked over that time to try to stabilize this district. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with the Waverly Terrace, uh, the old Columbus Junior High School. We worked to help get it stabilized when it was deserted basically by the school district. Um, we, my husband and I live only a block from this house. Uh, once it was rezoned single family, a family did live there, took very good care of the house, but he was transferred out of state. Um, most of the problems that we have run into in our district have come from these houses that have been converted to multifamily. You have uh, houses that have what they call apartments, but they're more like studios. They are not air conditioned. Uh, there's hardly any room. The turnover is um, every few months. Um, most of the rowdiness, uh, drug problems, prostitution come from these homes. Um, what we as uh, an organization work to do is to preserve, protect, and promote, and especially encourage residency, homeowners. Those are the best people to take care of properties, to appreciate the historic uh, meaning of these homes. Um, so we encourage you not to change this back to uh, multifamily, but to leave it single family so that we can encourage and stabilize this neighborhood for future homeowners. Thank you. And Mike, I think he would like to say something. All right. Something. Hang on just a minute, Ms. Smith. Uh, commissioners, do you all have any questions of Ms. Smith? No one? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else like to come speak for or against this case? Please come ahead and come to the podium. Give me your name and address again for the record, please. Can I pull down my mask? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I hate That's these things. I'm Mike Johnson, 2814 Peabody Avenue. I'm a neighbor and in the surrounding area that got the notification of the rezone. Um, we have worked diligently with this commission several years ago to get almost, uh, tw was it 26 homes, 27 homes, rezoned from multifamily to single family. And this commission worked very diligently with us, with I think a predecessor that was here. And we successfully campaigned and got those homes converted or rezoned. And we have seen a incremental quality increase in our neighborhood. We've had less walk through traffic, uh, less drug activity, less noise. Uh, so we were really happy that, that, that the commission worked with us to do that rezoning. And we now, including the house that's up for rezoning today, that was one of the homes that was converted. The homeowner did approve rezoning it to single family. So it is a, a definite step back for us to rezone a home in our historic district to go back to multifamily. I'll say this for these fine gentlemen. We welcome them to the neighborhood. They do great work. They, they toured us on some, we went, we want to partner with them. There's many homes that are still zoned multifamily in that neighborhood that need their good work but not this one. This home, we worked for years to get rezoned to single family. It'd be a step back for the quality of this neighborhood and the quality of that house to go back to, to uh, triplex. So uh, we ask that you deny the rezoning. I'm sorry, <laughs> but because we like these guys. 
they do good work. It's not, nothing personal, nothing against their business. It's this home is a step back for us in the quality of our neighborhood going forward. And with all the neighbor, the, the petition that we have from residents and alumni for, that have been past students in that high school, that old high school, they, can't, they are so tired of that neighborhood falling and getting further and further down uh, and being degraded. Um, so 53 signatures that we have on that petition, we represent those, those folks that want that home to remain single family. Thank you. All right, just a minute, yes, please. Sir. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Johnson? No. Yes, sir. Ms. Smith uh, mentioned that this house or for this old houses don't have air conditioner. Is that the present state of the house? I believe it has window unit, but you would know more of that. To keep it historic? Has windows unit. Okay, will the new house be uh, with the air conditioner? So loud, sir. A cent central air? Yes. Is that what you mean? Central. And that will, that will disqualify it as uh, historic? Is that what? No. No. Okay. No. No. Right. no. No. Any, any exterior uh, modifications to the house, uh, as Libby mentioned, such as the roof, or as this Mr. Haggerty mentioned, such as the roof, uh, things of that nature, anything exterior has to go to the BHAR. All right, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. What is the main complaint? You say you have 53 signatures? Yes, sir. What are the main concerns for the people that are in opposition? Degradation of the neighborhood. When you put three, uh, I think it's about a 1,500 square foot, oh, approximately, I don't know exactly, but when you split that up into three separate apartments and a 1,500 square foot home, you're going to have parking problems. That there's not ad adequate parking. They'll be parking on the streets. We already have people in the neighborhood that park in the yards. They've destroyed the yards. Uh, my next door neighbor has done that. There's nothing but dirt on their front yard because they park cars in. There's not adequate parking to, to hold that um, three, home, three res separate residents in a 1,500 square foot home. It's, it doesn't make sense. So, and I understand their plight. They have a situation where they were hoodwinked and bought a house that they thought that appeared to be a triplex already, non-issue. I get it. I get it. But it's zoned as single family, and that's what it needs to remain. Thank Is you, sir, for your answer. Yes, you clarified my answer. Pardon? You clarified my question. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Chairman? Yes. Okay. Uh, just to clarify some of the things that uh, Libby and Mr. Johnson have said, uh, Gosh, 2016, I guess, uh, we were invited out to the early college school building there, January, February of 2016, and that's when the process got going, and uh, they went around and got 26, 27 signatures of people who were interested in rezoning uh, their properties from RF1 to SFR4. Um, they did the footwork. It, we filed the planning with the planning commission in uh, May of 2016, and just to tell you how long it took, this finally got done in November of 2017. So it was a lengthy, not fun process. So they've worked very diligently, and um, it's so, you, all so you did rezone about 26 to 27, actually. Yes, all within the district, mm -hmm. and they they are sp they are spread out. But again, like I said, these folks went and did door to door to get the signatures because we can't just rezone people's property without approval. Um, so it, it was it was a considerable effort. I understand. Can I add something to that? Sure. There is about 150 homes in the historic district, and we uh, we did knock on those doors, and it took took time and the commission really worked diligently with us to kind of school us, to help us along with that process and it did take a lot of work and we appreciate it. And that's why we were so heartfelt on not taking a step back on a house that we worked for years to get rezoned. So we, we have a heartfelt in, investment in this, uh, this neighborhood and we want to keep it as high 
integrity as we can. Gotcha. So we ask for your denial of this right. rezone. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience like to come speak for or against the case? Uh, are you speaking for or against? Okay. No, come forward and please state your name for the record and address. Good morning. Uh, my name is Cody Phillips. I live at 2714 10th Avenue. Um, I wasn't going to speak this morning, but I feel like I have kind of a different perspective on this. Um, I moved into Waverly Terrace about a year ago. It's my first home, uh, 27 years old. I was 20, just almost 26 at the time. Um, and I moved in kind of as an as an investment. Um, uh, you know, I, I saw potential in the neighborhood. I know that downtown is expanding uh, with, you know, new businesses opening up closer and closer to Waverly Terrace with a brewery and some other things going in just north of there. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to keep the property values, you know, going up. I would, I would hate to 10 years from now, you know, if I move, lose money on, on my house. Um, so, you know, from somebody that hasn't been there very long, you know, I can, I have, a, you know, neighbors that are buying and neighbors that are renting and it's night and day at the, uh, you know, the quality that they keep their homes. Uh, you know, I have a, a house that is adjacent to me that has about 14 people that live there. Um, and it is just trashed and the police are there almost every day. Um, so I, I just kind of know the, the situations when you have that many people living in a home, uh, what can kind of go on. Uh, that's really all I have to say. All right. Questions, commissioners? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, sir. Did you want to come up and speak? Please also state your name and address for the record. Good morning, gentlemen. Ken Dupree, uh, 7444 Barron Way here in Columbus. I've been a resident of Columbus all my life. Left to go to school, come back in 1985. My wife and I share a, share a very fond bond with this community. I just want to bring to point an interest. Uh, the property in question there's 21, currently 21, if not more, multi-family residents within a three-block radius of this home that's in question. The home that's in question today is in disarray from previous neglect. As a project manager for Freaky Fast, the home investor and Matt Haggerty, I can tell you that the quality of work that goes into these rehabs is on a whole different level than what this community has seen in the past. As far as parking on the street, that's a problem already. Not one that Freaky Fast would be adding to. You, you can ride that neighborhood anywhere, anytime, find parking on the streets and the yards. Uh, the intent behind the rehab for that property is not to change the exterior of the structure, it's to simply bring it back to life. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to say. Just a point of interest as far as the properties surrounding it being multifamily as it is. Whether they're zoned multifamily or zoned single family, there's still 21 plus properties in there with, with multiple front doors. So thank you for your time. I, I do have a question. Yes, sir. What type of rent would you be getting from each unit? I, I'm, I'm not asking specifically, but is this a, what we would consider affordable rent for, say, someone who's single who can't afford something larger? It would be affordable. Each unit would be a um, one-bedroom flat, so to speak. Uh, the work that goes into the house would warrant rent somewhere in the neighborhood of anywhere from 600 to 750 a month. Okay. All right. A, a much higher quality than what it has been in the past. That's right. All right. Commissioners, y'all have any, any questions here? All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right. Uh, let's see. No questions here. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to come speak for or against this case? Have you got anything different to add? If you do, please come forward, state your name, and address for the record, please. Good morning. My name is Claire. I live with Cody at 24, 17, or I'm sorry, 2714 10th Avenue. Um, I do want to note that parking would be an issue, as they've noted, like 
Libby and Mike and Cody all noted would be an issue. It's mostly an issue from the multi-level homes. Would be adding to the problem if we made another single unit family home. Like Cody mentioned, we've got 14 people living in a home adjacent to us. Mm -hmm. Most of the problems that come from that are from parking. I have, we constantly are fighting for a place to park. We've got one driveway as most homes do in our neighborhood. And it's, it would be an issue to change it back to a multi-level phone home after Mike and Libby worked so diligently and so hard to make it into a single unit family. We want to see this neighborhood grow and prosper into a place where people are proud to make a home, not somewhere where there's constant foot traffic and drug issues and prostitution. So All right. That's what I have to say. All right. Thank you. Any qu commissioners, any questions? All right. Thank you. Does anyone else in the audience like to speak for or against this uh, yes ma'am if you will please come forward and state your name and if you have anything new to add we'd appreciate that and my name is Holly Talley and I work I mean <laughs> I um, live at 2910 Peabody Avenue which is a couple blocks over but um, if every landlord would be like freaky fast I would say, well, okay, but if they could promise me that they would be the landlords for the next 20 years, I'd say, okay, <laughs> maybe. But I don't, you know, if, um, if a buyer came that was, if the money were right, I'm afraid just like any business person, I would say, I'll sell it to you. And that the next landlords would not be so diligent about who the renters were going to be and would not be diligent in keeping up the property. We got to see a house that they refinished, and I would want to live there. It is pretty. And you could tell just great quality work. And I, but I'm just worried about who the next owner of the house might be. And if they did, if it were going to be multifamily, I know they could it, we just have a tendency to not be as well kept and maybe not have as good of renters because we do have some rich people that own some of those houses and it's horrible, the conditions. There are Section 8 houses that are not being, um, I don't know how, but they have holes all in the houses and holes in the roofs and inadequate heating and air conditioning and inadequate electricity and I think they do stuff like well you had a dog and you weren't supposed to have a dog so therefore I cannot meet my um, you know the section 8 housing owners are supposed to meet certain requirements so that's my that's what I'm worried about all right commissioners questions thank you miss tally You're welcome. all right sir you, you had your hand up I just you got to come to the podium, please. Thank you. Again, Ken Dupree, 7444 Barron Way. I apologize uh, for my hand gestures back there. I just wanted to make a quick note and contention that our rental process is definitely not Section 8 type housing. We do own a Section 8 house, and that I would encourage you gentlemen to feel free to walk through at any point in time. Uh, maintenance is kept diligently, but my point is that we do not accept drug dealers and drugs and prostitution for rent. Uh, that's just an aggravating issue for me. We, we do extreme due diligence in our, in our rental clients. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Is anyone else like to speak for or against this case? Uh, do you have anything different to add? All right, will you come forward, please? And like I say. Uh, Libby Smith, 2901 Beacon. Um, as Mr. Dupree mentioned, the 20 some odd uh, multifamily uh, zoning uh, in the area around that house on um, 11th Avenue, he is right. Uh, most of the houses in that block are, are zoned multifamily, but they're occupied by single-family homeowners. The house next door, um, 
two houses down, there is one duplex on that street. The, us, the rest of the homes, even though they are zoned multifamily, are occupied by single family homeowners and all. And one thing he didn't mention is that this is just an average size house and two of the apartments are more like studios which has very little room in them. There is one area that is a little larger that, you know, maybe a couple could live in, but the others are extremely small. And even though Mr. Haggerty did mention how many years he's been in service, how many properties they have here, he is not from this area. He is in Tennessee. That's where his company is. So. It's not a company that is invested in Columbus except for monetary profit. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak at this time? All right. That said, commissioners, y'all have any other comments? Or I open the floor up for a motion since we have no other comments from the audience. Well, gentlemen. It's difficult. I know. Uh, when it comes to uh, rezoning REZN 05 20 1775, request to rezone 0 0.13 acres of land located on 2900 11th Avenue. Current rezoning is, uh, you said this is a uh, misprint from residential? No, it's a uh, RMF1 going to SFR4. No, it's going from SFR4. I mean, SFR4 to RMF1. RMF1. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm the substitute. Okay. <laughs> With the purpose of uh, use for a triplex, this property is located in Council District uh, Mimi Woodson. I move to approve this motion. All right, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Yes. No, if you don't, if you don't second it, it just. But do we need to do one way or the other? Yes. If, if there's no if second motion, second. then somebody else can make a counter motion. That's correct. Now, if, if we don't get a second, then we will ask for a counter motion, motion. Well, let's just go, I'll second it so we can have a motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? Ah. All right, all those in favor of this motion to approve, raise your right hand. All right, we only have one that has uh, moved to approve. We need another motion to Deny. So who would like to make that motion? I'll make the motion? Yes, sir. Please make the motion. Motion to deny. Okay, and based on concern of the citizen, the zone, the multi form single. To multi, the square spacing, the the things that they detail that they have a problem with. Okay. All right. We have a motion to deny. Do we have a second on that? Second. Have a second. Mr. Bollinger, all those in favor to deny, raise your right hand. All, okay, all right. And we have four to one to deny. All right, thank you very much for your time and can attention. I, Mr. Chairman, can I just can I make a brief comment on that? Um, Ms. Smith, Ms. Johnson, the, Mr. Johnson, I'm sorry. The one thing I'd consider looking at the maps, obviously the majority of the district is still RMF one. You got 26 that converted. You had 53 people that signed this petition. I would say there's 26 more. I'm creating more work for Mr. Johnson over here. Sorry, Will. What? Um, but you've got 26 folks that aren't converted. If you've got 26 properties that you converted to 
back, you uh, downzoned it back to single family, you had 53 people sign a petition, and I'd encourage you to reach out to the rest of the 26 that aren't to get that neighborhood, because right now there's a piece of property on Waverly Avenue that's for sale that looks like it's all sorts of triplex and diplex, and they can they can go in right now and and do that. So um, I just there's 26 candidate prospects for potential getting the zoning right. So just to yeah, we um, we'd go through this. We just do the same process again, um, and of course. Mike and Libby know exactly what the process is, uh, getting the signatures. So, uh, you know, we want to, we'd like to get about five at least to bring them forward. Um, so, sure, y'all stay active and just bring them to me. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We move to the, we, I have no doubt. All right. We're joking with Libby. She's a, she's a BHAR member. Oh goodness. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's also keep in mind that there is a need for affordable housing in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, you continue to turn people down that are actually trying to do better. You you will continue to have what you continue to have. All right. Next case. Next case is uh, REZN-05-20-1776. This is a request to rezone 0 0.89 acres of land located at 5377 Veterans Parkway. Current zoning is NC Neighborhood Commercial. Proposed zoning is GC General Commercial. The proposed use is a veterinary clinic. Michael Wright is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 8, Walker. And we'll hear from uh, Mr. Johnson with the uh, planning Planning report first. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. REZN 05 20 1776. This case is consistent with the comprehensive plan, planning area F. Current land use designation is general commercial, and future is general commercial. It is compatible with existing land uses. Uh, the property does not lie within the floodway and floodplain area. The developer needs an approved drainage plan prior to issuance of a site development permit. The property is served by all city services. Average annual daily trips will increase by 86 trips if used for commercial use. The level of service will remain at C. The site shall meet the codes and regulations of the Columbus Consolidated Government for commercial usage. There's no school impact, no buffer requirement. This is not within Fort Benning's notification range. This is not a DRI. Surrounding zoning uh, to the north is GC, to the south is NC, back to the east is SFR3, and to the west is NC. Just a this is about the fifth or sixth property here in the last three or four years has come forward mm -hmm. from what was the old C2, which is now in C, rezoning to <coughs> GC, which was the old C3. Um, so along a six-lane corridor, obviously, the appropriate zoning, it was the old C3. Um, attitude of property owners, 20 property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified of the rezoning request. <coughs> Yesterday, the planning department received an email uh, in opposition to this request. Uh, main issue was noise as far as dogs are concerned um, with barking. Um, there's no additional information. Um, uh, Mr. Wright is here. All right. All right, thank you. Commissioners, do you all have any questions of uh, the planning department regarding this request? All right. All right, Mr. Brooks, are you going to be, or Mr. Wright, are you going to uh, be presenting this? If you would, state your name and address for the record, please. Michael Wright, 6823 Whitesville Road. Uh, as Will stated, this is just kind of a conformity, getting this property to where it needs to be, uh, neighborhood commercial to general commercial. Uh, the veterinarian clinic that is actually going to occupy this space is already on Veterans Parkway just across the street. They're literally moving across the street. Uh, the email that you received, uh, actually the gentleman's son, uh, David McMillan, is here on his behalf to speak. Uh, and it, it, 
as the email states, and I've spoken to uh, David McMillan and Mike McMillan on this, uh, really their only concern is the noise of dogs barking uh, because they have a uh, vacant piece of land that actually is the neighbor to this property and they've uh, just worried about dogs barking uh, that could potentially uh, interrupt a future theoretical restaurant. That okay, is which, which property is this that we're talking about? I didn't mean to interrupt. 73? Is it the, the old pizza? South. The old pizza? Mazios. The old Mazios, yeah. Okay. 5371. Yes. Gotcha. 53. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. All uh, right. Hang on, sir. Mr. Wright. Sorry. Gentlemen, any questions? Mr. Wright, concerning this? Sorry, we have to ask. No that. problem. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Is anyone in the audience like to speak for or against this case? Please come uh, forward at the time. And uh, state your name and address for the record. And I'm not against the to be noticed, but you are against. Okay. All right. All right. Yes, did you want to come speak? Um, well, it's just a case. You need to come up to the microphone and state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Claudia Zaragoza. About these dogs barking, I mean, er, as far as I know, I've been here for a year and a half. And what's your Everybody address? Everybody has. What's your address, please? The 3904 7th Avenue. Okay. And I live quite near by them. I don't hear them, but I, I'm surrounded by a neighborhood that has a lot of dogs. And I know this uh, veterinarian, the dog place there. And this place only, they only babysit the dogs only in the, in the daytime. I mean, they're not housed there for the night. So I, I, I don't see an issue there. Okay. Right. I, don't, I mean, I really don't see an issue there. All right. <laughs> All right. Commissioner, That's... any questions? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Is anyone else in the audience like to come speak for or against? All right. That's it. All right. Let me see. Make sure I don't have any questions. I do not. Um, all right. Commissioners, the floor is open for a motion. Mr. Bollinger. In the case of REZN 05201776, request to rezone 0 0.89 acres of land located at 5377 Veterans Parkway. Current zoning is NC, proposed is GC. Uh, Michael Wright is the applicant, and this is Council District 8 Walker. I make a motion that we approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Mr. Derby, any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand, and it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, we have one more case on the agenda this morning. Let's see. All right, and Mr. Dudley approves as well, so it was unanimous. All right, case number three, which is REZN. 06201910. This is a request to rezone 0 0.16 acres of land located at 530 Walnut Street. Current zoning is GC. Proposed zoning is RMF1, residential multifamily one. Proposed use is residential. Neighbor Works Columbus is the applicant. This property is located in Council District 8, Walker. And we will hear from the planning division on the staff report first, please. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna wing this. There's no staff report. Do you need mine? Sure. All right, REZN-06-20-1910. Uh, this is consistent with the comprehensive plan, uh, planning area F, current land use designation is single family. Future land use designation is single family. It is compatible with, adult, with, all, with existing land uses. The property does not lie within a floodway and floodplain area. Uh, the property is served by all city services. Annual daily trips will increase by 11 trips if uh, used for residential. Uh, the site shall meet the codes and regulations of the Columbus Consolidated Government for residential usage. Um, the site shall include a category C buffer along all property lines bordered by the GC zoning district. The three options under category C are 20 feet with a certain amount of canopy trees, understory trees, and shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, 
10 feet with a certain amount of shrubs, ornamental grasses per 100 linear feet, and a wood fence or masonry wall. Number three is a 30 feet undisturbed natural buffer. This is not within Fort Benning's notifications range. This is not a DRI. Surrounding zoning north is RMF1, south is GC, east is GC, and the west is RMF1. 55 property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified of the rezone request. We have not received any comments. There's no additional information. I will add that um, Neighbor Works, this is the Anderson Village area over North Highlands. They are heavily uh, involved in that neighborhood right now. So this is just part of the efforts they've had uh, going on for a while now. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Commissioners, y'all have any questions of planning? All right. Now, who's here to speak on behalf of uh, NeighborWorks Columbus? If you would please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Good morning. My name is Lance Renfro, representing NeighborWorks Columbus. Our office is located at 345 6th Street. Um, uh, NeighborWorks has been working diligently in the Anderson Village area and uh, just south of that on 4th on Avenue. We are in the process of rehabilitating several homes within the Anderson Village and uh, working to be in compliance with the State Historic Preservation Office as well. Um, this is just one, of, one additional home that we would like to rehabilitate. Uh, it's currently zoned for commercial and it is a um, 715 square foot home that we would like to uh, rezone for residential so that we can rehabilitate it. Why are you going to RMF-1? Because that is what the surrounding homes are as well. So we're going to a consistent... Okay. Yeah, introducing an SFR in there would be spot zoning for the I understand. Part. I understand. I was just and want to clarify that um, due to the last case. <laughs> yeah. And then I think the properties there on 38th Street are also residential, even though they're zoned general commercial. I got you. They're being used residentially. All right. All right. Commissioners, y'all have any questions of Mr. Renfro? Anyone? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is anyone in the audience like to speak for or against this case? Please come forward at this time. I need you to speak in the microphone. I need your name and address, please. My name is Marty Nelson. I live at 3913 Oaks Avenue. There are some houses that need to be tore down and probably should be cleared off. But uh, I didn't get where, you know, if you're going to go in, you're going to tear their houses down, you're going to rebuild. They're going to rehabilitate the house. But there's something there you can't rehabilitate and it needs to be tore down. Sir, you need to address this commission, please. But, all right. There are a few in there that need to be torn down. It's unrehabilitated. It can't be redone. Unless you build it, unless you do tear it down and rebuild another one. Uh, like I said, there's a house right next to mine that's fallen in, and it's been like that for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And it, it needs to be tore, took out. Okay. And but if uh, I don't get this rezoning, you're not going to go in and try to buy other people's houses that's on fixed income that can't afford to move anywhere else. Their houses need, and they need to be right where they're at. No, they sir. Don't, we, they we, don't need to be rezoned nowhere else. Well, we're, we're just speaking specifically for this one in particular right here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? All right. Anyone have any further questions or any comments? Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak for or against this? Please come forward. All right. Commissioner? Mr. Renfro. Please come forward. 
Uh, since my time in Neighbor Works, with, which has been um, over the past two years, we have rehabilitated four homes in Anderson Village. Uh, we're in the process of rehabilitating one right now. Uh, and these homes are uh, made of solid brick on the outer walls. Even the inner walls are brick. Um, you, you can't even burn these homes down. Um, and, and we've uh, removed uh, hazardous materials out of these homes, asbestos. A lot of the roofs has asbestos on there, a lot of the flooring. During our process of rehab, we remove all of this and, uh, and build, put new roofs up. And again, we stay in compliance with historic preservation to keep the historic theme alive in that neighborhood. So um, this house is very rehabable. Um, and, and they're all built primarily the same. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. That said, we open the floor up for a motion regarding this case, please. Yeah. Yes, sir. In the case of REZN-06-20-1910, applicant and owner is NeighborWorks Columbus, property location 530 Walnut Street, current zoning classification general commercial, proposed zoning classification RMF1. Uh, because it is uh, consistent with general land use and the future land use designation, I move that we approve this request. All right, we have a motion to approve. We've got a second. Mr. Bollinger, any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. And it's approved unanimously. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, we appreciate your time and attention this morning. Our next meeting is scheduled for August the 5th, 2020. And uh, at this point, we do have some cases. Is that correct? We have two cases. So if there's any way, um, any way you can certainly make it, we would appreciate it. We appreciate your help in getting here today. Uh, this helps move our, our zoning along much more smoothly, smoothly and it helps. Um, and Mr. Chairman, we will send out some further, inf I don't know if John did or not, we, of course we're working remotely. We will send some, fu some future information out about how to conduct these meetings. Yes. As far as the situation seems to be getting worse. Um, we like I, uh, I was telling Mr. Bollinger earlier. We've got the city attorney looking into it, and um, we'll get something that we can work with, um, and that'll give us enough time to work with CCG TV um, to see how they're doing it at the Civic Center. Because I know yesterday, C Councilor Woodson was at home, but I mean there she was on the screen. So gotcha. I don't know. We'll figure out something, but uh, the the physical quorum thing. Uh, we're going to try to get that figured out. Okay. And we're also working on a uh, PAC member's handbook as well. Uh, yes. It's Mr. Underway. Renfro is. So it kind of gives a little bit of direction and a little bit of help going forward. Um, so, and with the contacts, et cetera, so forth in it. So we'll ha hopefully have that to you maybe by the next or the next meeting. Something. I think he's got them ready, but that's his baby, and I was going to let him. <laughs> run with it. I understand. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for being here and um, 